Hello mate and welcome to episode 2 or part 2 of our Unity for Dum Dum series. Now in the previous video we discussed game objects and the way that we can use them. So what we're going to do in this video is we're actually going to cement that knowledge by putting those things into practice. Now what we've got on the screen here is the default editor for a 2D game. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set up the editor to how I like to have it. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. All of the tabs have titles at the top so that you can kind of follow along with what I'm doing. So I'm actually going to drag my hierarchy over to the left here, as well as my project browser. I'm going to put that in the gap there. Bring this over to about halfway across my screen. Bring that across as well. Make my inspector nice and wide. I'm going to change this to a one column view. And then I'm actually going to bring my game view down into this window and put my console up at the top there. And there we go. Now we can just do that. Now, what another thing I like to do is where it says free aspect here in the game tab, I'm actually going to set that to 16 by 9 aspect. And the reason I do that is because this is the aspect ratio that the player is going to have when they load the game. So I want a representation of what they're actually going to see and that's what happens in this game window is that we see what the player is going to see when they play this game or this level so having it 16 by 9 just makes it a little easier to visualize this area up here the scene view is actually our kind of uh, editor window this is where we can add things to our game and we can already see a couple of things in there like our camera and our global light 2d um, those things just kind of live in there we can edit them and adjust them as much as we want. But if I actually click on the main camera, what we can see is that the camera is just a game object. It's got a name, main camera, and it's got a transform, and then it's got a camera component, an audio listener component, and a universal additional camera data script attached to it. These are just components, just like we talked about in the previous video, that add properties and behaviors to this game object and the same thing with the global light 2d it's got a transform and then it's got a light 2d tab attached to it or a component attached to it that gives it specific behaviors so if i just deselect those what we can see here in our hierarchy tab is sample scene and then the current game objects contained within that scene and what we can see is the sample scene we can change the name if we want to but this is essentially a scene is just a level maybe if you're making a platform it would actually be a platformer level um, if it were a top-down rpg this could be somebody's house or it could be a small portion of the map if you remember games where when you enter certain areas the screen kind of changes it goes black and then comes back in a different area. That's just the game engine loading a different scene, essentially. Now, there are issues relating to that with regards to moving game objects from one scene to another because in Unity, um, by default, it doesn't carry things like the player. So if your player had an inventory, you load into a different scene, you would have a completely empty inventory it would wipe it out in the new scene when you return to the old scene your inventory would return so there's workarounds to do that to enable you to carry your inventory between levels or between scenes but we'll talk about that in a more advanced video for now we're just looking at the absolute most basic functionality of the unity editor so what we've got here on the on the project view is our assets folder and you can see there's a folder with scenes in it and our sample scene is saved within it. And there's a number of settings here as well. Really, I wouldn't touch any of those for the time being. Any packages you might have installed, and there's a whole bunch that Unity adds by default, are contained within the packages folder. Again, if you're not gonna load any specific packages in, just leave this folder as it is for now. Just don't bother opening it. So in our project folder, we can actually create a new folder. So let's go into our assets and we can right click and we hit create and then you can follow across here and you can say folder and you could say scripts. So that might be where you put your C-sharp scripts and it's fairly kind of standard practice to do that, to have a scripts folder where you'll put all of your game scripts and then you can add scripts to it. So what we'll do 
is we'll talk about the two main ways that we can create a script and add it to a game object. So in our hierarchy view, we're actually going to right click and you can see a whole bunch of things down here that we can create. Some 2D objects such as sprites, tile maps, uh, cameras, all sorts of stuff that we can add in there. But essentially, I'm going to create an empty game object. And as you can see, it's currently called game object. And I'm just going to put uh, GDT underscore game object. And I'm going to spell object correctly. And as you can see, it's a game object. It doesn't currently have a visual appearance. It's just got a transform position, rotation and scale attached to it and a name, obviously. And if I were to use the move widget, you can see that there is actually a widget that allows me to move this object around. And you can see as I move the object, the properties on the right hand side in the inspector do actually change. So we are changing the position, but at the moment, this is just a ghost. It's got, there's no properties on it whatsoever. It's just an empty game object. It's just a reference currently to a position in space. What you can also see is that weirdly, sometimes when you create game objects, rather than being at Z zero, i.e. on a two dimensional plane, it should be on zero. It gives it a weird value. So always remember to just kind of fix that if you want to make sure that all of your objects are appearing on the same plane. Otherwise, you're going to end up with some weird um, things happening. But currently, our game object has nothing attached to it. Now, we can add something. So let's just go to this and add an image. And as you can see, now what's happened is it has added a canvas renderer and an image to it. But what I've done is that actually I've created um, the wrong kind of thing. So I'm going to, if I remove that by going into the little burger menu in the top right hand corner, it tells me I can't delete the canvas renderer because the image component is dependent upon it. So I actually need to remove the image component first, then I remove the canvas renderer and now it's gone. Now if I go to search for sprite renderer, what we have now is the ability to add an image to this object using the sprite renderer component currently we have no sprite selected as you can see none but it has a color and it has a bunch of other properties but currently we don't have a sprite so what i'm going to do is i'm going to select that and if i type in square or something like that we can actually just add one of the default shapes to it alternatively what we can do is we can go into our assets folder and we can create a new folder and we'll just call it sprites like so and then i can actually drag in my own sprite so that's exactly what i'm going to do i'm going to i've got some sprites that i kind of threw together um, i'm going to actually drag in uh, this sprite that's what i'm going to do i've created a sprite i'm going to drag it in and then if we open up here you can see that my little 2d sprite that i've created there has been imported like so now if I come back to my game object and I drag my Doom Slayer sprite onto the sprite renderer, you can immediately see that that sprite has now been added to my game object and my game object is there. But at the moment it looks super blurry and crap and that is because, because I'm using a pixel art image, I need to turn off filtering because what it's trying to do is trying to make my image look nice and smooth so where it says filter mode on my actual sprite that i've got selected in the project explorer i'm going to turn off bilinear filtering and set it to point no filter and then we need to hit apply and now what you can see is that my sprite is no longer blurry it's pixel art as it's meant to be and i can just click on it and what you can see is that you can select the game object by clicking on it like so and I can move it around the screen. So now we have a visual for our sprite. We can also change the scale as well if I want to. If I want to unilaterally change the scale, I can click on this link icon up here and then just hover my mouse over the X and drag it up. And you can see that I can actually scale up my object in my scene view. And what you can also see is that in the game view, my sprite has appeared because it's reflecting what the player would see if I were to export this project right now and compile it as a exe file and someone were to play it, this would be what they'd see. They'd just see my little 2D sprite 
sat in the corner of the screen, which is fine. It doesn't really constitute a game at the moment, but that is my game object with a sprite renderer component added to it. Now, there are other components we can add to it, such as Rigid Body 2D and com Collision and a whole bunch of others. Like if you click on this, you can close down that and you can see there are loads of bits and pieces that we can add to it. But there's also, there's also more importantly, there's ways that we can add our own scripts to it. If we come to the bottom of the Add Component menu, you can see New Script. We can type in the name of our script. So let's just say um, Player Controller create an add and what it's now doing is it's created a script called player controller and it's added it straight to this object like so and you can see that here in my assets folder player controller script has been created not ideal because what i really want is for all of my scripts to go into the scripts folder but we can just drag it in there and drop it in there if we want to alternatively what we can do is we can actually, once it's compiled, we can create a script by right clicking in our scripts folder, go to create C sharp script, and we can call this other player controller. And you can see it's now created a script within there. And then if I click on my game object, once it's compiled, as you'll notice every time you create something or change something, Unity will immediately compile to affect those changes straight away. So you don't have to wait. If I now click on my game object, I can just drag my other game, other player controller script onto my game object and it's been applied. Something else you'll notice is that because I've used capitals for the separate words in the name of my C sharp script, which is what we would call a class, in the name that's been added to the game object in the inspector, it's actually separated those words out so that we can read it a little bit easier. So another nifty thing that unity will do for us just to make life a little bit easier whenever we're coding objects or things in unity what we kind of have to think of is even if we're doing the game development entirely on our own we have to try and make it as designer friendly as possible because the whole point of writing using a game engine is that you're trying to minimize the amount of messing around that you're having to do under the hood so if you create a robust inventory system, you shouldn't have to keep dipping into code to add new stuff. You should be able to do it all from the Unity editor once you've got the foundation of your Unity um, inventory system created. And the same thing for your controls, for your level map, your tile map and all of that. You set everything up so that when it actually comes to designing and building your levels and your game, you don't have to keep going into the code. You can do it all from the Unity editor. So that's kind of what we have to keep in mind whenever we create these things. So what I'm going to do is in my game object, I'm going to remove the other player controller script. We don't need it. I've already got one. So I'm just going to remove that component and then I can select it in project view. And I can delete it and it will say, are you sure? And you just say yes. And it will recompile now that that script has gone. It might take a few seconds. And there you go. You can now see that that has uh, been removed from the game. And we're down to just having one game object, one camera. And our game object has a empty script applied to it. If I select the script, you can actually see what that script currently contains here. And in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to edit this script. And we're going to see what kind of properties and things we can get our character to do by default really easily just using this single script. But that's covered the basics of the basics. Hope you found that useful. Let me know what you think in the comments below and I will see you in the next one. But until then, you take damn good care of yourselves, all right? Bye-bye.